Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope you're all doing well, hanging in there, staying safe in 2020. I wanted to come online today and actually talk about a really nice document I found online related to software engineering career ladders. So what I found was CircleCI's engineering competency matrix, which CircleCI is a technical company focusing on continuous integration. And they, along with a variety of other companies, have published their career levels online. And I actually think it's a very, very, very useful document. So I wanted to come online today and just talk through it with everybody and share some of my thoughts. First, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the audience for this. You can see there's a very, very detailed set of criteria, competencies, and expectations for software developers. Usually for technical companies where the software developers start to be in the hundreds or hundred plus, they start thinking about these levels much more specifically. For smaller organizations, I think this is not as well thought out. So this kind of criteria is very specific for any professional developers that might be working in an organization with hundreds of developers. But if you're a freelancer, if you're just working at a small development shop, or maybe you're not working at a technical company, but still doing programming, this kind of leveling may not be applicable for you. But anyway, for everybody else, anyone that's trying to be a professional software developer at a large at a large software organization, stuff like this is gonna be very, very helpful. So let me just walk through the document with everybody. On the left vertical side, we have themes of competencies and sub-themes of these competencies. So the first one, technical skills. We have delivery, feedback, communication, collaboration, leadership, strategic impact. You can see there's a, these are very, very high level themes. They may not me mean much, but let's just break down technical skills a little bit. So Circle CI, how they do it. Within technical skills, you can see they split up the competencies, writing code, testing, debugging, observability, understanding code, software architecture, a lot of different things. For every single one of these competencies, they list the expectation for all their engineering levels, which there are six of them. So I'll go through these six levels. I think every software company has something very similar to this, give or take a couple levels, give or take a couple you know, titles, but overall it's almost the same. So six levels, I'll run through all the levels just so we're on the same page here, but E1, associate engineer, probably also a junior engineer, entry level engineer. Level two, regular engineer. Level three is gonna be a senior engineer. Level four, a staff engineer. And then we go into senior staff engineer. And then we go into the final level of engineering, which they call principal engineering. This is a pretty common phrase to represent kind of like the top, top tier of engineer at any organization. So for these six levels, they actually rate what's expected of you if you're at that level for the various competencies. So it's actually a very, very useful reference document for you to self-evaluate some of your skills. The important thing I wanna point out, I just wanna point out a couple important details. I'm not gonna go through this whole document with you, but I wanted to kind of pinpoint a couple important things. One, the first thing I want to call out is that writing code Writing code, you can see writing code is just one out of probably 20, 30 plus competencies that you're judged on when you're a professional developer. So this just goes to show that writing code is a very, very small, maybe 5% of how you're judged as a software developer. So while it's very important, you know, when you're first starting your career ramping up, like just being able to write code, it's one of 27 things that you have to kind of still be aware of and progress in. So writing code, you also notice that there's only three different levels of code writing expectation. Once you get into the staff engineer level, their description is just C E3. And then for E5, it's just C E3. So what this pretty much means is that for this company in particular, once you're a senior engineer, you should be already writing top-notch code. So I'll go through these descriptions with you. So entry-level engineer writes code with testability, readability, edge cases, and errors in mind. Pretty standard. 
for a regular level engineer, this is the expectation. Consistently writes functions that are easily testable, easily understood by other developers, and accounts for edge cases and errors. Finally, for a senior engineer, the description is consistently writes production ready code that is easily testable, easily understood by other developers, and accounts for edge cases and errors. Understands when it is appropriate to leave comments with biases towards self-documenting code. And you can see for the top levels, there's no, there's no other expectations for coding. So pretty much by the time you're a senior engineer, you should be writing top-notch code. But again, the important point that I wanna drive home is that coding is just one out of 27 things that you have to consider. The second thing I want to point out is that you can see there are a lot of competencies, competencies, sorry, can't talk, but there are a lot of competencies per level. And by no means does any company expect you to hit every single box to reach this level. So for example, if you're an engineer too, and you're trying to get promoted to a senior engineer at this company, you're trying to go from E2 to E3, there is no way they expect you to hit the box for every single category. That's just gonna be outrageous. Not everybody is gonna be good at everything. So what you can consider these are, these are kind of more like guidelines. They're for, they exist for you to frame where you are and what it takes for you to get to the next level, but you don't have to hit every one of these like a check box. So you could probably progress to a senior engineer by being very, very good at technical skills, for example. But if you go down to strategic impact, maybe you're still like E2 level expectations for strategic impact. But again, you don't have to hit all the marks to make it to senior. So these are roughly just guidelines and not so much a checklist. So it's pretty much okay. Don't feel like you have to hit this whole column just to be a senior engineer. Finally, one thing I wanna talk about that could be helpful if you have some competency matrix like this at your company i would reread it again along with all the ones that are available online including this one i'll make a link for it in the description and just google you know public engineering career ladders but for each one of these what i would recommend is that make a copy of the spreadsheet and then do a self-evaluation for all these things if you're a programmer for all these things, highlight where you think you personally stand for all these different competencies for you to self-gauge your level. But more importantly, once you self-evaluate where you currently are, you can make a concrete plan to get to the next level. So all these descriptions are very abstract. So they're all like, is aware of organizations monitoring philosophies. All these things are very abstract. So what I challenge everyone to do is take these abstract definitions and put something very concrete to the description so you know what you should be striving to achieve. If you can't think of anything concrete, you should talk to your peers that are more senior than you, talk to your boss to give you some ideas. But all these things, these abstract guidelines, they're only guidelines and you have to fill them in with something like real, something practical. So. Let's just take debugging. Let's just take this row for an example and walk through what debugging might mean for a variety of levels. So let's say you're working on this category of your technical skills and you're an entry level software developer at Amazon and you're working on the inventory system. So you're tracking all the inventory for all the Amazon products. It's a very important service, it's crucial. You know, it's a small part of Amazon, but a very important part of Amazon. So as an entry level engineer, you probably understand the basics of debugging and the tools used. So whatever code you write, you can at least debug it. Pretty reasonable. If you're an E2, maybe you can debug issues within a single service. So any issue that might arise with the inventory service, for example, you'll be able to debug that because that's your area of expertise. So once you get to senior engineer, let's see this description. Proficient at using systematic debugging to diagnose all issues in a single service and uses systematic debugging to diagnose cross-service issues. So not only 
can you debug issues in the inventory service, but perhaps you can actually debug cross service issues in the whole e-commerce system too. Because if you think about Amazon, inventory is just one part of their e-commerce platform, right? Not only are you able to debug inventory stuff, but you can kind of understand what's going on across all of e-commerce. So let's keep going. So E4, so the definition of E4 is, for debugging at least, proficient at using systematic debugging to diagnose all issues within the scope of their domain. So this pretty much means that like, not only are you able to debug an issue with the inventory system, but if there's an issue with Amazon e-commerce at all, you should be able to figure it out, which is, you know, a pretty large set of things to do. You need to be able to handle anything that happens within any e-commerce system at Amazon. Now let's go beyond that to another level. Let's see what they mean by E5, senior staff engineer. So description is proficient at using systematic debugging to diagnose all issues within a set of related domains. So think about Amazon e-commerce, for example, that's just one domain. Maybe the e-commerce data feeds into a business intelligence warehouse domain somewhere. Maybe it feeds into this machine learning recommendation thing somewhere. Maybe it feeds into internal tools. The e-commerce system doesn't have a, isn't standalone. It hooks into many, many other important domains at Amazon. So if you're a senior staff engineer, you can actually diagnose issues that span across these domains. So let's say there's a problem with the e-commerce system and some data is not getting into the machine learning system and some internal tools are broken. You should understand and know how to debug that whole, all those domains and how they you know, might interact with each other. So finally, if we get to the principal, you know, E6 level, this is the highest level of engineering. So you can imagine what a principal engineer at like a company like Amazon might mean. Like you have to be pretty skilled at debugging at this point. So the description is leads incident response across the engineering organization as needed. So this is just another way of saying if anything at all goes wrong with amazon.com at all across the whole engineering organization, you know how to handle that incident. And I'm sure not many people are able to do that, which is why not many people are principal engineers. So that's just, again, I just wanted to go through that exercise because you should make a copy of this for yourself, just for your own personal progression. and. Ideally, you should kind of make a use a reference of your own employer. If you're working at a software organization, you should use those points as a reference. But if you don't have that, I think this is the next best next best thing where you can use some kind of like free public engineering ladder and just go in, self-evaluate yourself of where do you stand for all these different competencies and you can kind of get a sense of what level you might be if you worked at Circle CI, for example. And more important than where you stand, it also just gives you guidelines of what the next level expectation could be. So again, these things can go really high level. There's not many people that can be principal engineers or like very senior staff engineers at these companies. It's, you know, those are very, very tough positions which like demand a lot out of individuals in all these different categories. So I guarantee no, no matter what level you're at, if you take this document, you know, look over it, read over it, try to apply it to where you're at currently, I'm sure you'll find some way for you to progress. So again, just wanted to share this document. I think it's very useful. Just take some time, read through it, and I think it's gonna help you a lot. All right, thanks everybody. Hope this was helpful and have a good evening.